In America South, some call it baby killing. We see this as the Holocaust of our nation. Alabama has passed a law to ban abortion. Other states are following suit. This is infanticide. Soon women may be forced to carry their pregnancies, even if they've been raped. He pushed me down and uh, choked me and, um, and raped me. If I'd had the option to terminate my pregnancy, I would have made that choice. My boy, my boy. But across the country, there's outrage. And you don't have a problem with Absolutely. killing a baby? I have no problem if it's in the mother's uterus. Allowing children to be ripped from their mother's womb right up until the moment of birth. With President Trump backing America's religious conservatives, we ask, are women about to lose the right to abortion? It's already hard to get an abortion in America South, but soon it could get a lot harder. Earlier this year, Alabama passed the toughest abortion ban in America. It's due to take effect in November. The law bans all women, except those with serious health risks from abortion. America's Supreme Court, the highest in the land, gave women the right to abortion 47 years ago in a landmark case known as Roe versus Wade. Now the southern states, whose abortion bans are being legally challenged, want to use them to overturn the Supreme Court ruling. We headed hundreds of miles across the Deep South towards Arkansas. It's not called the Bible Belt for nothing. It's like there's a church on almost every corner here. The belief amongst Christians here is that life starts at conception and must be preserved at almost any cost. Candy is a mother of seven. When she was 19 years old, she decided to have an abortion. That deep spirit within me was like, no, this is not right. And uh, I changed my mind um, on the table. Um, I had the nurse telling me that it was too late and I was fighting the nurse. Um, she called for help. Uh, two other nurses came in and they held me down while the abortion was completed. Nature tells us how valuable human life is. Traumatized, Candy turned to religion and then set up an agency to persuade women to give up their children for adoption instead of aborting. I took the life of that child. With the adoption, you always have hope of knowing how they grow up, what they become, being reconnected with them. There is great hope in adoption. 14 years ago, Candy adopted a child of her own. She had met a young pregnant woman carrying a fetus believed to have major health issues. We talked a lot about life and fetal development and why adoption. So this we call the, the girls area, mm -hmm. my 19-year-old, uh, my 21-year-old, and then of course Anne Marie. Um, this is her room. Hi there. And How are you? <laughs> Good. This is Anne Marie. How would you describe yourself? Uh, being bossy, kind, and sweet. You're bossy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anne-Marie was born with an incurable skin disease called epidermolysis bullosa. It leaves raw, open wounds on much of her body. She's in constant pain. That little bitty spot is a good indicator what her whole stomach looks like. She could wake up and be fine, and within minutes, um, her stomach has, you know, not doing well. Anne-Marie has already lived longer than anyone expected. Few with her condition reach adulthood. Do you think there are any circumstances in which a woman should be able to have an abortion? 
I believe it has to be extreme cases. I don't believe that we get to make the decision on who lives and who dies. Across the South, many states want the abortion bans to extend to women in extreme situations. Women who've been raped or subjected to incest and those whose children would be born with severe disabilities. In Alabama, we met Dina Zerlot. Dina was raped when she was 17. It was a boy I knew from school. He followed me into the kitchen and um, proceeded to push me down and uh, choke me and, um, and raped me. For ongoing health reasons, Dina didn't find out she was pregnant until eight months later, which meant she couldn't get an abortion. She was also told her child would be severely impaired. There would be no higher function of her, of her brain. She would be born blind and deaf, unable to probably suck a bottle. Um, she would live in pain. Dina loved Zoe deeply, but her child also brought back the memory of the rape. I was constantly, constantly being brought back to that trauma on a regular basis. As for Zoe, she was in constant pain. Her whole body would just lock up and almost like to the point where you were afraid to touch her, afraid to move her because it looked like her bones might break. Zoe passed away after a short, painful life. Zoe died whenever I was 19 years old. Um, she didn't make it to her second birthday. Dina's case is unusual because she was so far along in her pregnancy but she's outraged that even rape survivors in early pregnancy may soon lose the right to abortion. If I'd had the option to terminate my pregnancy, I would have made that choice. Alabama's abortion ban goes the furthest, but 12 other states have joined the crusade. Phil Bryant is Mississippi's governor. You want to ban abortion even in the cases where the woman has been raped or the victim of incest, is Well, that right? two things about that. One, uh, the child had nothing to do with it. An ideal scenario uh, would be to save every child. Even if the woman's been raped? That's right. But just looking at the issue itself, um, it's a very difficult thing it is difficult. for a woman to carry her sure. rapist's sure. child. Sure, it, it, it is. And it's a very difficult thing um, for a baby to be dismembered. Unbelievable. And now, this deeply emotional, ethical debate has exploded onto the political scene. Allowing children to be ripped from their mother's womb right up until the moment of birth. What's that all about? President Trump knows that the conservative Christian vote is critical to winning next year's presidential elections. And with America already torn over abortion, President Trump's thrown fuel on the fire focusing the debate around the most sensitive issue, abortions in the late stages of pregnancy, which he described like this. The baby is born, the mother meets with the doctor, and then the doctor and the mother determine whether or not they will execute the baby. I don't think so. No abortions in America are carried out in this way. 98% of abortions take place before 21 weeks of pregnancy. Late gestation abortions are rare. Dina believes they're misunderstood. The vast majority of cases of late-term late abortion, it is happening under unthinkable circumstances, and it is pregnant people who are being met with choices that, that, are, that are impossible to make. I wanted to hear from someone who carries out abortions in the late stages of pregnancy. There are only few with doctors dedicated to this. I headed north to meet one. Dr. Leroy Carhart, nearby in Maryland, is probably America's most controversial abortionist. He's inspired by his work because he says the women who come to him are desperate. So these are all letters from your patients? Yeah. To the staff and Dr. Carhart, this was one of the hardest times in my life. I don't, I didn't even think it was possible to get at this abortion because of how far along I was. Dr. Carhart says he follows the law here, 
which says women can only have a late gestation abortion if their health is at serious risk or the child might not survive. So how broadly do you define medical need? I believe it goes into financial health, social, social health. But what's important to me is the woman has to tell me that it's going to destroy her life if she can't carry the baby, if she has to carry the baby. Anti-abortionists accuse Dr. Carhart of unnecessary abortions very late in pregnancies. He firmly denies this. The truth is, it's Dr. Carhart who interprets what counts as a medical need. When would you turn a woman away? When I need to. I'm not going to go where you want to go. To the fetus, it makes no difference whether it's born or not born. Okay? But the baby has no input in this as far as I'm concerned. But it's interesting that you use the word baby because a lot of abortionists oh. uh, won't use that. Oh, they'll, I, use the, yeah, they'll use the word fetus because they don't I, want to acknowledge that there's, I, that there's a life. A, I think that it is a baby and I, tell our, I use it with the patients. And you don't have a problem with Absolutely. killing a baby? I have no problem if it's in the mother's uterus. He believes conservatives in America are trying to push women back into the dark ages. Their entire goal is to take away a woman's right to determine her pregnancy level and therefore her ability to be employed, to become successful, to become a functioning part of society. They want the woman to stay, stay home barefoot and pregnant. Is there a bigger picture here that you and, and President Trump tr trying to yeah. turn the clock back, bring America back to what you see as a more moral kind of age? I'm not going to preach or talk about morality. Uh, people have to make that decision with their faith and with their God. We're, we're just simply saying we think it's wrong to take an innocent life of a child in the womb. For much of America, the issue is political. But for Candy, it's deeply personal. Anne Marie, living proof in her view that America would be better without abortion. We have a lot more good days than we do bad days. There are times that she's in pain, but she loves life. I would absolutely like to see abortion abolished in America. We see this as the Holocaust of our nation. Abortion has always been divisive in this country, but under President Trump, it's become a battle over two different visions of America.